Great. God has indeed made today a special day. Amen. We've heard special testimony. Amen. We've seen so much happening, family. So I just want to welcome each and every one that has taken the time to come and cover themselves with God's word. Amen. Close the door to Satan with some worship. Amen. In prayer. Clear out any misunderstanding. Amen. And ask him for forgiveness. Mom Veronica started something last week. And those that were not there, I suggest you go and have a listen on the YouTube channel to that message. And the topic was standing strong or stand strong. And she spoke about the armor of God. So if you think you got over that, well, we're not over it yet because we're going to talk about it some more. And I'm on this week and next week, so expect a full episode. Amen. 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 <laughs> Let me just uh, get rid of the, the noises. Give me a second. All right, I think that will be better now. Let's get the word of God in front of us. And let's just close our eyes for a moment. Let's just ask God to, to take control. Father, I just thank you today that I've been chosen to deliver your word. Father, I thank you that your word is so powerful. Your word gives us direction. Your word gives us support. Your word heals us, Father. And your word is everything to us. We thank you. We give you the glory and honor, and I just ask that you will move me out the way, and that it be all of you and none of me that brings your message to everybody. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, for everybody that will ever listen to this message, I pray that God will sow a seed where it will grow exponentially. Amen. Amen. So today I'm going to talk about how to wear the armor. Okay. You know, uh, um, when you go to army, you go into military training of any sort, you soon get to understand, or in my days, you very quickly came to understand what it means to wear a military uniform. Mm. It came with a lot of pride, a hard work, and effort to be able to wear that uniform. And even more so, to maintain it, because there's a certain level of maintenance required. And you would think that when you're still a young soldier, that what they are doing are ridiculous. But it's not. You know, when, when I joined, we had to iron three lines on the back of our shoulders between or between the two shoulders soldiers soldiers shoulders, <laughs> shoulders. Um, for what we still don't know but you see that is teaching something by doing that it's not what we think is important it's more than just about me i and what i want it's about discipline and what others see in you by the way that you maintain yourself. My icon on Zoom is or talks about serving with excellence. And I really strive to get people to understand that if you're going to serve anyway as a child of God, it has to be done above and beyond your expectation. Amen. So how do we wear the armor? Let me just make sure that you understand that you're not putting on a uniform. 
it's not about the wearing of the uniform, but about how we approach God's kingdom. Wearing the tools that he has given us to work with. You see, and I suggest open your Bibles in the book of Ephesians because we're going to spend a little bit of time there. And I suggest that for the next six weeks at least, you study the book of Ephesians. You see, Paul was in jail when he wrote this letter. And whilst writing this letter, many of the things around you influence him. And obviously being in jail, he saw officers in uniform. And he took that and he applied it to the way a Christian needs to live their life. What we have to focus on here is in this analogy that he painted, is the sense of urgency in his turn, making a call to action for all believers, both in his day and today and into tomorrow. See, this passage has always intrigued me because it seems to come out of nowhere. Just all of a sudden, Paul is talking about wearing the armor of God. To understand this, you need to go and read Ephesians. But you know, Paul's design for the armor of God is not the first in the, in the Bible. He has actually taken Old Testament prophecy and scripture, and he has laid it down in the New Testament for the new believers to read and understand. You see, the portrayal of the soldier has taught me practical ways of guarding my faith and resisting the enemy. I'm more able to meet daily challenges while keeping my peace. We all know that the passage of the armor is located in Ephesians 6, and we're going to go there just now. I'm just going to read it again just to refresh ourselves. But you see, Paul first compels his readers to stand firm for God with his strength, with his strength with his strength, not ours. Amen. Paul explains that our struggle is less than a physical one, less a physical one than a spiritual one against our true enemy, the devil. So right now, I want to make a statement. And I want you to not forget that statement I've made because it's very important. Maybe it's a bit profound, but I don't know. It's, it says God operates in the spirit and Satan in the flesh. Oh. Let me say that again. God operates in the spirit and Satan in the flesh. So Bishop, what are you saying? We'll get there. Don't worry. Just remember what I said there. Paul begins to list the individual pieces of armor and the use of each in the battle a Christian must face. <coughs> Ends the section with a reminder to pray. It's amazing how everything ends in prayer. Starts and ends. In and he requests that the churches 
will lift up his need to be bold as he speaks out for God. As Christians, we need to become bold. Amen. We want to hide in the dark corner and watch. Christian life is not about watching. It's about doing. It's about fighting the battle. Because you're not fighting on your own. So the armor of God scripture, Ephesians 6, verses 13 to 20. Let's quickly read it. Therefore, big word, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth, buckled around the waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is in the word of God. Mm -hmm. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and keep, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will be fearlessly made known. So that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Amen. Amen. I thank God for his word. Amen. May it penetrate deeply in your heart today. Amen. So, what is the purpose of God's honor? You see, Paul starts, and this is why we need to read the book of Ephesians. Paul starts with the greeting and praise for God's blessing to believers. The next three chapters are quick, but, com uh, but a compelling reminder of what believers have received through Christ and the heritage they share. Next, Paul turns to stressing how members of the body of Christ need to show love and respect for each other. I want you to note that down. Don't forget. He stresses that the body of Christ needs to show love and respect for each other. From the middle of chapter 5 through to the first nine verses of chapter 6, Paul addresses specific members of the household, including husbands, wives, and children. Verse 10 begins the last main section of the book. This is Paul's plea for the church to <coughs> stay strong. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor Lee. In their fight against the devil's scheme. After many of years of faithful service, Paul knew firsthand that the enemy was always working to undermine the people of God and that his methods were craft. Believers need to be alert and ready to fight, standing against the powers of this dark world. While we're sleeping, darkness is busy crafting your downfall, your disaster, your pain, your mishap your challenge for the next day. Darkness never sleeps. Darkness never takes off the day. Amen. The book of Ephesians was written by Apostle Paul as an encouragement. 
to the church in the city of Ephesus. But we may have expected that the letter to be shared with all of us right until today and into tomorrow. The point he makes about unity and righteousness, living between believers, apply to any Christian church and household. You know, not just valid for us as they were, for, or it's just as valid for us as it was for the original church. See, Paul didn't write this passage to stir up fear, but to encourage, encourage believers because of God's total provision for us. We can't, we can stop feeling vulnerable to the enemy and start feeling equipped and content with it. Let me say that again. You can stop feeling vulnerable to the enemy and start feeling equipped and content with him. Amen. One of the devil's favorite weapons is lies. And lies start at a very young age. Cunningness is one of the main factors to lies. It was just a little lie. I just, I just bent the truth a little bit. I didn't want to, to tell you because I was scared that it may cause a problem. Stealing one rand or stealing a million rand has the same value in God's book. It's not the amount, it's the act. A little white lie or a big nasty lie, they all have the same result. You see, often Satan distorts the truth. So it can be hard to distinguish fact from fallacy. But if we ask God, he will give us discernment. Well, we spoke about the belt of truth. Amen. It starts with the truth. Everything comes back to the truth. And the belt is what holds everything together. Amen. A lie will separate you from everything. The armor will just come tumbling down. I've seen members in family through a lie. Suddenly we don't see them in church anymore. Suddenly they don't talk to us anymore. Mm. Suddenly they don't want to know the family anymore. Mm. Just because of that lie. Mm. The belt of truth. Satan also tries to undermine our self-worth and question our place with God. Well, Emily, this is so big, I cannot even comprehend it. Every single day I see Christians that are in despair. I see Christians that are in depression. I see Christians with anxiety. I see Christians crying in fear. But why? Yes, we're not bulletproof. Not even I am bulletproof. Although I tell my wife, I'm bulletproof. <laughs> but Satan is continually stabbing at you and telling you you are worthless. Every time you make a mistake, Satan is working on you. He wants to take you down. We're not allowed to allow Satan to take us down because the man that's standing behind us, which is not a man, but a God, is far bigger than any challenge or fear that you may encounter. And only if we are really in his presence 
if we are really studying his word and getting to know him and praying every day, there is nothing that Satan can do under your feet because Jesus told you so. Amen. The breastplate of righteousness. Amen. Anyone who struggles with self-esteem and fall prey to mm. Satan's tactics. But when we listen, when we hear our Heavenly Father remind us of his unconditional love and our position in Christ, yeah. there is nothing Satan can do. Mm. There Amen. is nothing Satan can do in Jesus. my house. No matter what my circumstance, Satan does not have his foot anywhere near my street. Jesus. Yeah. Hey. Glory. Our position in Christ carries far more power Amen. than any challenge, Satan. The enemy wants to keep the people of God quiet. Yeah. yeah. He tries to plant seeds of doubt in us about how well we speak. Well, if uh, Satan told me that and he succeeded, you wouldn't be listening to this message. Amen. Because I was never the greatest speaker. In fact, when it was time for an oral exam, I would bunk school. <laughs> I was scared to speak publicly. Oh drama my was not my scene. I could cause the drama. No problem. <laughs> don't ask me to do an act drama. It doesn't work. You see, you will keep quiet because you are not confident. Why are you not confident? Because you are not firmly planted in his word Amen. every day, mm. reading, praying, mm. meditating. Mm. Mm. The fitted feet. That's true. The feet of the gospel. Mm. <coughs> but if we pray, God will provide the strength and boldness. We need to give our testimonies. Wonderful testimonies we have. Don't we just feel uplifted? I just Amen. saw people's eyes sparkle when Brother Tati said, I got the job. No, my. Oh, my. I just see Brother Sandile smiling quietly from the East Coast to the West Coast. Amen. <laughs> we need to boldly give our testimonies. We need to boldly shine the light for Christ and not be ashamed of the gospel. Amen. Amen. The devil planned to derail our faith. He can include using situations, even other people. Our personal weakness can be, or can leave us open to temptation, discouragement, and wrong behavior. But when we admit our need for his help, when we admit that we need help, God will make us tougher. He will cover us in the shield of faith. Amen. Amen. The struggle with Satan often starts in our thought life. Mm -hmm. Any faulty ideas, anxieties, or fears we may be holding onto can be amplified and used against us. Hence the scripture, keep your thoughts captive. But if we call unto God, when you have that thought, when you have that moment, I'm going to kill you. Just call unto God. Amen. The helmet of salvation. Protect 
Mm. Your thoughts. Mm. Fill it with God's word. Mm. Fill it with God's presence. Mm. God will renew us so our eyes and minds will stay focused on him throughout the day. The enemy helps to neutralize the power we have through Christ. He aims to confuse, intimidate, or scare us, hoping we will forget God's word. But if we seek him, but if we seek him, God will fill us up mm. with the confidence to declare scripture and claim his promise for our lives. Amen. The sword of the spirit. Amen. I always make a claim and I say to you, you can hold up your shield of faith. But unless you are producing a sword every now and then, eventually faith will fail. Amen. Sure. Mm. Okay. Let me repeat that. You can hold up any defense mm. for as long as you like. Mm. But if you do not apply any offense, mm. your defense mm. will fail. Mm. And the only defense or offense we have is the word of mm. two edged sword. Mm. Amen. Amen. The sword of the spirit. Satan desires to cut off our prayer life. The first thing that happens to a Christian when they go down is their prayer life stops existing. Mm -hmm. He knows that without it, we are less aligned with our father and less alert or prepared to for attacks against us. Mm -hmm. But as we set aside time for fellowship with him, God will supply us with all we need. To make a positive impact for you. Pray, people. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. And in case you thought you'd done enough, pray again. Oh. Amen. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. Ephesians 6, 12. Let's read Ephesians from, from 1 to the end. Remember I said to you earlier, God operates in the spirit. Amen. Satan operates in the mm. flesh. Ephesians 6. Six verse 12. Okay. This verse is a reminder that there are unseen forces at work in the world. Before Paul talks about the armor, he wants people to understand why they need it. You need to understand why you need it. Yeah. Yes. He was supporting the idea that the devil is alive and well on the planet Earth. Where is he well and alive on the planet Earth? No. We are born into the flesh, no. into sin. Are you getting a picture yet? Yeah. No. And we'll take away, or we'll take every opportunity to attack us. His goal is to pull us away from the Lord and tear us down. Down. How? By the sins of our flesh. How do we protect ourselves? In the spirit. There's nothing you can do to protect your flesh from Satan. He is inborn there. You are born into sin. Your flesh will always yearn for a little goodness on the side. Mm. Your spirit man, which is activated the day you give your life to Christ, mm. needs to grow and become strong to take control of Mr. Flesh and Mr. So. Mm. Amen. 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 
I was a new Christian the first time that I heard the phrase spiritual warfare. And the concept of unseen forces at work for my harm made me anxious. Amen. Amen. I can't Amen. see this stuff happening. I want to know what's happening. I'm a person like that. I want to know what's going on in the world so I can be ready. I must be prepared for everything. But in God's kingdom, all you need to do is trust in God. Amen. You see, the more I learned and experienced of God, the more I saw his authority over those powers. The truth that God has secured my victory became more real, even if I couldn't see the battle. Paul knew that the Old Testament about, or knew about the Old Testament mention of this notion. Pastor Chas, please read 3, Deuteronomy 3, mm. verse 22. Deuteronomy 3, verse 22. verse 22. It reads as follows. Um... Do not be afraid of the nation's stand, for the Lord your God will fight for you. Amen. That is the, that is, um, 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 let me just read from. Amen. 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 Do not be afraid of that. Mm. Do not be afraid of them. Who? The enemy. Mm. Amen. Amen. The Lord your God Himself will fight for you. Mm. Amen. Deuteronomy 3 22. Mm. Now, please, if you trust in God like you should, what is it that you are concerned about? Hey. What is it that you are afraid of? Mm. When the servant of man or the servant, the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning. An army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Amen. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. What is it that the prophet knows? What is it that the child of God that's embedded in God's word, prayer, meditation, and understanding knows that the normal person does not know. He says, do not be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Amen. And Elisha prayed. Amen. Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and he saw hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. Amen. So he struck them with blindness and Elisha had, as Elisha had asked. That's 2 Kings 6 verses 15 to 18. It's on that little picture I shared on the WhatsApp group. Mm. If anything that we spoke about this morning, it all is about trusting and believing that 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 God has given us is real. Mm. When I pray to God, he will protect. Mm. When I pray to God, he will give. Mm. When I pray to God, he will make miracles. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Unless you believe, the mountain will not move. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't move, we will continue until it moves. Amen. Because only God knows when the time is right mm -hmm. for the mountain to move. Mm -hmm. Jesus understood the devil's desire to steal, kill, and destroy us. Mm -hmm. During his early ministry, he waged war with our unseen enemy by teaching, expelling demons, and performing other miracles. Later on, he appointed these disciples to go out and do the same. The problem is, 
we become so focused with demons that we forget to worship God. Mm. It becomes a thing as of expelling a demon out of somebody that doesn't even have a demon. We need to continue to focus on that that is good. We need to continue to focus on that that is in the spirit, not in the not in the flesh. Because the demon is in the flesh. Hence my statement. God operates in the spirit. Satan operates in the flesh. Then it comes and he says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Amen. Luke 10, 19. And then the pastor comes and he gives his people something to drink that's poisonous and then expects that the miracles are going to happen. Do not put your Lord God to the test. That's not what it's about. Do not let people tell you things because you don't know the word of God. You see, in the New Testament, Paul extends the ability to battle the enemy to all believers. But he will make sure to add that it is not in our own power, but in God's power working through us. The moment you lift yourself above God's power, it's a long way to go. And you're going to fall hard. It's God working through me that creates opportunity, favor, blessings, and change people's lives. Amen. Me? I'm just a blessing. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Although we live in the world, we do not wage our war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish Amen. stronghold. We demolish arguments and every petition that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Amen. That's 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 5. You see, the Bible is so full of scripture that we can never comprehend it all. But if you've read it once, you will be reminded at the time when you need it. Okay. Okay. So now I ask the question. Where was Paul inspired with the scripture in the Old Testament? Prophet Isaiah's words came James. And in Isaiah, we read in Isaiah 11, 5 to 4, it says righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. In Isaiah. That's where we read the first time about the armor of God. That's Isaiah 11, 5. In Isaiah 52, 7, it says, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring the good news. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 59, 17 says, He put on the righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put, it, he put on the garment of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. Those of us that don't understand the word zeal, it's passion. We're going to talk about The club just left. You see, King David himself was well acquainted 
with fighting, he made a personal co connection to Isaiah's ideas and his songs. Psalm 18, verse 30 says, he, shield, he shields all who takes refuge in him. Psalm 18, 32, it says, it is God who arms me with strength. And Psalm 18, 34 says, he trains my hands yeah. for that. Paul wants to inspire his readers by extending this visual to include them. Through Jesus' work on the cross, believers can pray directly to God's heart and strength to walk by God directly. You don't need to pray to the pastor. You are muted, Bishop. All right, the main machine is frozen up. I'm really sorry about that. You can all hear me now? Amen. Can you hear me? Thank you, Mavi. We can hear Bishop loud and clear. Right, so I'm not sure you where you lost me, but I say I'll just start here. Paul wants to inspire his readers by expanding this visual to include them. Through Jesus, through Christ's work on the cross, believers can pray directly for God's power and strength to walk rightly. We don't need to use another medium. We don't need to use a priest or a pastor or a prophet or anybody else. You can ask God yourself for healing. Amen. You can ask God yourself for a miracle. Amen. But you see, to do this, we must be able to stand up when the enemy tries to knock us down. Amen. The battle is ultimately God's, but we have to actively part to play. Putting on the armor is the first step to being victorious. Amen. So how do we, in today's life, put on this armor? Yes. Yes. You see, we don't put on special clothing. We can decide, decide simply to put on some good habits. Put some good habits into practice. You see, we wake up in the morning, we have certain habits. Brush our teeth, use the loo, have breakfast get dressed, or bath, get dressed, go to work. So we need to apply some God habits in that normal habit, like some little bit extra time to do some praying, reading, and meditate. Good habits we apply. This will increase our discipline and inside both important ones for God and for his warriors. Here's a point, a few pointers. Reading his word, Joshua 1.8. It says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with what that is written in it, for you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. When will you be successful? When you read and read and meditate on the word of God, day and night. Number two, studying the mem and memorizing passages. Psalms 119, verse 105. Studying and memorizing passages. Your word 
is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When you have a situation, you need a scripture. If you have a scripture, you need to remember them. Amen. Third one, praying. Praying. Psalm 145, verses 18. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. Without you know, fellowship. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. And let us consider thoughtfully how we may encourage one another to love and do good deeds, not forsaking our meeting together, the meeting of the saints, when we get together for church. As believers for worship and instruction, as in the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. <clears throat> Sharing testimonies and truths. 1 Peter 3, verses 15. You see, it's not only us saying to you, share your testimony. 1 Peter 3, 15 says, But in your heart set God apart, as wholly acknowledging him, giving him first place in your lives as Lord. Always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone who asks you to account the hope and confidence assured that my faith is in within you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. And then worship. <laughs> worship in all its forms keeps us turned towards God. How do you feel after you worship to God? Immediately, all troubles leave. All pain leaves. You can even be bedridden, but you will get up when you worship God in spirit and in truth. As we give regular time to acknowledge and celebrate him, the enemy influences over us diminish. When you are down and you are in trouble, worship. Even if you sound like an old squawker on a on an old car, you know those old hooters? <laughs> Whatever they did. Remember that? Amen. Amen. Worship. Just give thanks. What did, what did Paul, what did King David do when his son had died? He got up, got dressed, or bathed, got dressed, ate, and went to worship. Our words will carry more of his authority. So in closing, hearing all that God has prepared for us, there is still one piece of armor that is not spoken of here, and anybody takes notice of it as yet. But yet it's one of the most important pieces of armor. It's always the last piece that an officer puts on. It protects us from where we come from, our past. Those things that Satan wants to throw at you because of your past, your past mistakes, your failures, and everything else. It's that path that we have battled to get to where we are now. But the armor is not the same as the rest of the armor, as you can only gain it through application of your true walk in Christ, engraving the armor in all of your life. See, only when you have worked hard in the military can you be promoted to an officer to wear a cloak. And that cloak is called the cloak of humility. You see, so in everything that we do, we need to wear the cloak of humility to be able to 
live our lives as Christians. So I'm just going to read this scripture today and I'm going to end it there. I'm going to leave you to ponder on that scripture. Don't forget to read Ephesians. It's Colossians 3 verses 12 to 15, Amplified. By the way, all the scripture today was from the Amplified. So as God's own people who are holy. Let me repeat the scripture again. Colossians 3 verses 12 to 15. So as God's own chosen people who are holy, set apart, sanctified for his purpose, and well beloved by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice and unpleasant, unpleasantness comes with good temper, bearing graciously with one another and willing forgive, willingly forgiving each other if one has a cause for complaint against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you forgive. Beyond all things put on and wrap, wrap yourself in unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity. For everything is bound together in agreement when each one seeks the best for others. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily with him, be the controlling factor in your heart, deciding and setting questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you were called as members in one body of believers, and be thankful to God always. We will continue next week on this train. Amen. Amen. So let's just pray together. And I want you right now to please examine your heart. And I want to ask you the question. It's my favorite question. If you die right now, are you going to heaven? Are you sure that you're sure that you're sure that you are wearing the armor? That you're applying the word? That you are doing as Jesus instructed? Are you living a life in truth and readiness to serve? Yes, Jesus opened the door to heaven, to eternity. But are you really in Jesus? If you're not doing what he tells you to do, if you're not behaving in accordance to his plan, if you are not reading his word, praying and meditating, loving your neighbor, caring for the orphans and widows, and many more that is stipulated in the word of God. So let's pray. And if you need to pray with, you're welcome to pray with in your heart. We just say, Father, we praise you for your protection from the evil one. His schemes are crafty and his attacks are vicious. But help us not to fear. Your mighty hand is more than powerful enough. Deliver us. Father, I just pray right now that in the hearts of people that you will work your wonders, that you will heal, that you will direct, that you will knit together the original plan that you had, that your blessings will come into our life. Father, we stand before you right now and we say, Father, forgive us. Forgive us for the things that we cannot understand. Forgive us for the things that we are weak in. Forgive us for not being who we are destined to be. We just want to realign ourselves with your kingdom, Father, your blessing, your mercy. We want to come back into your sheepfold and have you as our shepherd, leading us every day, guiding us in eternity. We thank you, we thank you for your word, we praise your name. 
for us this in your mighty name, Lord, and all that we have said. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Come